Imagine putting on a headset and instantly stepping into a different world, where dragons fly overhead or you're walking on the surface of Mars. Now picture looking at your office table and seeing holographic buildings out on it. These two amazing experiences are possible because of two powerful technologies, virtual reality and augmented reality. They sound similar. They even look similar at first glance, but they're very different in how they work, what they do and where they're headed. So today let's take a deeper look at virtual reality versus augmented reality how they started, what sets them apart, and where they might take us next. Right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the fundamentals. Virtual reality, usually just called VR, puts you inside a completely digital environment. Everything you see and hear is generated by a computer. The real world? It disappears the moment you put on that headset. Whether you're walking through a medieval castle or piloting a spaceship, it's all happening in a virtual world created from scratch. Now, augmented reality, or AR, is quite different. AR adds digital elements to your real-world surroundings. Think of it as a digital overlay on reality. Instead of blocking out your world, AR enhances it. You're still looking at your actual coffee table, but now there's a 3D model of the solar system spinning on top of it. Both VR and AR have surprisingly long histories. VR, as an idea, goes back to the 1960s. In fact, one of the first VR headsets was called the Sword of Damocles because it hung from the ceiling and looked more like a medieval torture device than something you'd use for gaming. Back then, the tech was incredibly limited, but the dream was already there. AR came a bit later. The term augmented reality was coined in the early 1990s, but the first working examples, used mostly in industrial and military applications, were around before that. Heads-up displays in fighter jets, for example, are a kind of primitive AR. They show pilots important data like speed and altitude, overlaid on the windshield, letting them keep their eyes on the sky. Both technologies have evolved dramatically, especially in the past two decades. Faster processors, better graphics, and smarter sensors have turned science fiction into science fact. At the heart of VR is immersion. A typical VR headset contains two small screens, one for each eye. These create a stereoscopic effect, making you feel like you're in a 3D space. Add in motion tracking sensors, and the headset knows when you turn your head or move around. Some setups even include hand controllers or gloves, so your movements inside the virtual world mirror what you're doing in real life. AR, on the other hand, relies on cameras, sensors, and advanced software to recognize the physical world and anchor digital content to it. Your smartphone's camera, for instance, can recognize a flat surface like a table or floor and place a digital object on it. More advanced AR glasses go further by projecting digital images directly onto transparent lenses, letting you see digital and real objects at the same time without holding anything. One of the biggest differences between VR and AR is how we use them. VR is ideal when you want full immersion. That makes it perfect for gaming, training simulations, virtual tours, and even mental health therapy. Pilots train in virtual cockpits. Surgeons practice operations in simulated environments. People with PTSD explore calming virtual spaces as part of therapy. In these cases, the complete control over the environment is what makes VR so powerful. AR, meanwhile, shines when you need to interact with the real world while still adding helpful digital elements. Think of factory workers using AR glasses that show instructions as they build something, or interior designers placing virtual furniture in a room to see what fits. 
Even Snapchat filters are a form of AR, goofy and playful, but technically impressive. AR doesn't isolate you from your surroundings. It enhances what's already there, which makes it especially useful for tasks that combine digital and physical elements. Right now, AR is a bit more accessible than VR for everyday use. That's because most of us already have AR-ready devices in our pockets, smartphones and tablets. Apps like Pokemon Go or IKEA's Furniture Preview Tool have introduced millions of people to basic AR without them even realizing it. VR, on the other hand, still typically requires dedicated hardware, like Meta's Quest headsets, Sony's PlayStation VR, or HTC Vive. These devices are getting cheaper and more portable, but they're still seen as more niche. That said, VR headsets are becoming more self-contained. What used to require a beefy gaming PC and lots of cables can now run wirelessly on a standalone headset. The tech is moving fast. Another big difference? Social interaction. VR is inherently isolating. Once you put on that headset, you're cut off from the people around you. Even in multiplayer VR worlds, you're still talking to avatars, not actual human faces. AR, in contrast, is built for the real world. Imagine wearing AR glasses at a party. You can still see everyone, still talk, still interact. Only now, maybe you're getting fun name tags floating above people's heads or cool effects lighting up the room. AR has the potential to become much more socially acceptable, especially as the hardware gets smaller and sleeker. So, what's next? For VR, the future is more realistic environments, better motion tracking, and perhaps even full-body haptic suits that let you feel things in virtual space. We're already seeing early versions of this in high-end arcades and research labs, AR's future is just as exciting and possibly even more world-changing. Companies like Apple, Meta, and Microsoft are racing to develop AR glasses that could eventually replace smartphones. Imagine getting a text, seeing directions, or browsing the web, all floating in your field of vision without ever pulling out a device. Some even predict a future where AR becomes so seamless that we no longer distinguish between the digital and the real. Virtual pets might roam your home. Digital art might hang next to real paintings. And yes, holograms might finally become part of everyday life. So, there you have it. Virtual reality and augmented reality two groundbreaking technologies that might seem similar, but each offers something unique. One lets us leave the world behind, and the other lets us improve it. Whether you're swinging lightsabers in a VR dojo or watching dancing dinosaurs on your kitchen table, you're engaging with some of the most exciting tech humanity has ever built. The future is virtual, the future is augmented, and chances are it's going to be both. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.